Yes! Finally got my printer. I've been without a printer for about two years now, and I finally got me a Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro. I'm super excited to have this thing. I have got a lot of projects planned, but first we gotta get into this. We gotta set it up and test it out. So let's get into it. First step is to attach the nozzle kit to the gantry. It kind of rotates on there from the back and down there. And then you attach it with M3 by six socket head screws in these four holes here. So it's easy to use the Allen wrench that's provided and just spin them in. I like to get them all started before I tighten them down. Then you can just snug them up. I have to go overboard there, little screws. Okay, in this step, we're going to take the gantry and attach it to the base using M5 by 45 socket head cap screws. So I'm gonna put the base over here on the side of the table. And then we'll just set the gantry up on it. And the print head goes toward the handle here. And we'll just start these screws in by hand. Now we'll spin the whole printer around. And we'll start the other two screws. I've got the other two in. I'll go ahead and snug these up. Spin the printer around again. And snug these two up. Okay. 
Okay, now we're gonna install the wire hook on the left back side of the printer here. It just slides right on. Okay, now we'll attach the screen bracket to the side of the printer in these three holes using three M4 by 30 round head screws. Start with the top one and just get it started. Now go all three of them up. I'll get the screen and plug it in. And I'll attach it to the bracket. Now we want to install the filament tube to the filament rack. It goes in on the same side that the filament detector is over here, so just stick that in there and twist it until it stops. Okay, now we just snap the filament rack on the top of the gantry, just hooking it on the front and just rotating it toward the back and pushing down. And while we're here, we'll plug in the filament runout sensor. Okay, now we'll make the power connections. There's one here on the back right hand side and there's one, or there's two rather, hooked right here. We'll push the bed all the way forward so we can get to it easily. And let's go ahead and peel that off. You can tell one's a bigger plug than the other so they just fit them in the right ones can only go one way. Okay. There's a plug taped down over here. Let's go ahead and peel that up. And plug that in here. There we go. Okay, now we're going to attach the nozzle cable. Stick it in the holder here where the label is. And I'll probably go back and remove that later, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. And then attach the 24 pin connector into the head. And it'll snap into place. And feed the cable into the holders. On the left hand side over here on the Y axis motor there's two plugs to connect. One is on the back of the motor here. The other one is the limit switch up front up here. Okay, now that we have the printer assembled, before we power it up, we need to make a few adjustments. There's some eccentric nuts, which are nuts that tighten, the move one direction or another when you tighten them or loosen them. So there's two on the bed, there's two, one on either side of the gantry here, and there's one on the print head. So we need to adjust those to make sure everything's working well, moving easily, but not wiggling. And there's also a tensioner here on this belt for the print head driver and we need to make sure that's adjusted right. So let's start with the print bed. Okay, so what you want to do on these, if your bed is already loose, you just want to start tightening it up a little bit, but mine isn't really, so I want to loosen it up a little bit until I feel a little bit of play. See right there, I can feel a little bit of play in it. And now just go ahead and tighten it up until you don't feel that play anymore. There we go. There's another one in the back, back here, and you just want to do the same thing. All right, there we go. Now they're both 
feel nice and snug and there's no play. Let's move on to the print head. Okay, now on the print head, there's a eccentric nut here on the bottom. So take your wrench and put it on there and just loosen it up a little bit until it wiggles. See, I'm wiggling a little bit there now. And then you want to tighten it up until that wiggling, just once that wiggling stops. Like right there is pretty good. Okay, we also have one on each side here. One here on the right hand side, one here on the left hand side of the gantry. And this is controlling the up and down movement of the gantry. So this one you have to check a little bit differently. You can't really wiggle it that much, maybe unless it's really, really loose. So you wanna loosen it up until you can spin this with your fingers just a little bit. Like too tight, you can't spin it at all, and then just back it off until you can spin the wheel just pretty easily with your fingers. All right, now do the same thing on this side. All right, so we got a good tight wheel there. Okay, the last adjustment we want to do is the belt that drives the head back and forth. And there's a belt right here and you can feel it. Mine came like extremely tight. And you should be able to just flex this thing with your fingers. So you want that to be at a tension where it just feels like it has a little bit of give to it. If it's too tight, it'll wear prematurely. So we don't want it too tight. Pretty good right there. One last thing in this hole here, there is a voltage switch. So I'm gonna peel the sticker here. And for the US it should be on 115, which is over that direction. So I'm gonna flip that switch. And now we should be good. Stick that back on there. And now we can plug in the power supply. Power cord. And plug it into the wall and get started. Okay, let's fire it up. Okay, first position you want to get a piece of paper up underneath the nozzle. So raise this just a little bit. And then you want to get it to where it just has a little bit of drag on it. So it looks like negative 270 is where I want it. So that's good there. Now we'll move it over to position two. And for position two, we want to twist the little knob under this position and get it to where it just has a little bit of drag when you slide the paper. Let's go to three. Same deal here. I have no drag, so I'm gonna turn it the right direction here. There we go. A little bit of drag there. All right, let's go to four. here. There we go. Go five.
All right, there we go. Looks like I got them all about the same now. So that is auxiliary leveling. When your bed is more than two millimeters out, your auto level will fail and you'll have to do this. But right out of the box, you wanna do the auxiliary level first. And then now we'll do an auto level. So we'll hit that start and let it do its thing. Okay, we got everything leveled, so let's load some material. So, let's put it on the spool holder, have it drape over the top. I'm gonna cut this at an angle. Like so. And now we're just gonna push it down through the runout sensor and pull it on through. Before we feed it into the head, we wanna to go to ready then manual, and then preheat PLA. Now we just want to shove it in the top hole here. And push this little lever over. And get it all the way down in there good. There we go. Now we want to manually make some material come out. So we want to go to I'm going to go to ready, in, out, in. Let's just do 20 millimeters. Okay, seeing that ooze out there means we have material flowing. Now we're ready to print. Okay, I printed a couple parts. I printed the Creality Bunny and of course Benchy. And I'm pretty happy with the quality of each one of these. Um, the Bunny came out really good. The detail's good. There was a little bit of stringing on the ears, between the ears, which is to be expected. And Benchy came out pretty good. So overall, pretty happy. Right out of the box, good print quality. Um, it was really easy to assemble and adjust and the print surface is great i mean the parts just pop right off of there but they stick well um and i'm just overall really happy with it i have a lot of projects planned for this printer so if you like 3d printing and solid design uh, mechanical design some electronic projects things like that like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video